Hi everybody, how are you doing? <sighs> I've just been for a quick walk with Porchy and this morning is glorious, just so beautiful. There's like a pink haze and the sunrise was, wow, it's still happening. Um, so today um, and this video, I really want to discuss education not just the system itself, but just education at large and learning. And learning is something that continues um, forever. It's not something we do at a certain part, point in our lives and we either succeed or fail in that moment. Um, it's, it's so much more than that. And I um, went on a walk yesterday with a teacher and I do get lots of teachers contacting me saying how demoralizing it is to be in a system that doesn't actually care about the kids' health um, necessarily. It's about do it this way or you're out. And the beauty of being human is that we're all so unique and we all learn in different ways. And some, some children can't sit in a classroom and focus for an hour. Some children don't like the subject, so therefore get really distracted. Some children need to get up to absorb the information they're hearing, especially as an autistic person or a neurodivergent person, when you're when you're learning something that excites you, you you have to you want to. I certainly want to demonstrate. Wow, this is amazing! You know, like get really giddy about what it is I'm learning, and I'm like that today. And. I love that about myself, but I don't remember in the education system that I went through where I got giddy. About, I mean, I loved art, and I, but I didn't sort of demonstrate the giddiness about art. And art was considered one of those subjects you did if you weren't very clever. Well, what a fucking crock of shit it, that is, because artists are, have deep intelligence because they're able to express feeling using their bodies, their hands, their imagination, and then demonstrate it on canvas for us all to feel and experience and understand. I mean, there's nothing more genius than that as far as I'm fucking concerned. And I, I use the word genius because I'm starting to really understand that um, neurodivergent thinking is genius and, and self-directed learning is the answer to a lot of people's health, mental health. Um, we are put into a system so early on that doesn't necessarily nurture us. And it's a gamble really, because we send our kids to school, we don't know who's gonna be there and what their um, reasons are. And some people are very much adhered to, have to adhere to um, the template that is the uh, curriculum, etc but it can't continue in that vein because even in the the best universities in the world they're still not catering to sensitivities and neurodivergency which is extraordinary really because <laughs> those universities are full of neurodivergent people as as is mainstream education as well but the ones that aren't fitting in are basically asked to leave or they need special education needs and it's not special education needs they just need to be heard to be understood and the whole system needs to change i mean not only should children be in and around nature <laughs> excuse me um, which inner city schools uh, find, you know, struggle to do, but you can have plant walls, you can open up classrooms, you can have bigger windows, you can have, because to see out of a window and to see into the world is part of your stimulation in order to focus and learn. And focus, really, you don't have to even encourage focus if you're doing something that you actually really enjoy. And that's why I'm very big on self-directed learning. I have educated myself through books and film, all kinds of film, 
I'd say, and through conversation, and through never having the same day twice, um, and uh, an openness to explore anything that triggers excitement in myself and that might be the sunrise and then and then I what I'll do is I can hear the birds and then I have my app so I can hear which bird it is and then I'll look at what that bird is because I am a twitcher I have been for like ever and even that is edu well of course it's educational because it's learning about nature and being moved by it um and then which brings me to maths actually because maths is a really interesting one there are people born to numbers and people born to get excited about numbers and that's the point is that if you are you should go and do that and absolutely be directed into that and helped into that but some of us are born numbers are an issue and when we can't do numbers I can do basic maths but I say in my book like I never learned the times table I couldn't get it into my head and it doesn't mean I'm not smart. And unfortunately, like I think I was in my mid forties, early forties, maybe later, who knows, can't remember. I'm rubbish with timelines, I always get them wrong. Uh, Cause it's numbers. <laughs> I'm always glad that I was born on decade, on the turn of a decade. Cause at least I know I can always know what, how old I am. Cause otherwise I wouldn't have a fucking clue. Um, and I wanted to explore being a therapist because I have been in therapy um, for much of my adult life. I think I first went when I was about 25. And that's not that's been an that's been an education in a completely different way. Um, but also I've also also I've always helped people and been able to um, troubleshoot because I am a solution based human. <laughs> And one of the one of the things that you had to have was maths. And I'm not going to put myself through a maths O level or GCAC or whatever they call them now at the at, at that age anyway. I did try it a couple of times and failed it. Um, in order to help people, it's just bollocks. And I know from my my youngest boy has never really gotten on with maths either and and he's been out in the education system now for it's coming up to a year and a bit maybe less than a year because he didn't he needed a break from it and he's going through his looking back on his um educational life and and telling me about the things that he experienced that weren't great and the PTSD that's occurred because of you put into a situation every day that might not, and it's not abuse necessarily, it's just not understanding what somebody needs. And, and I've been lucky because he's been to some good schools, but they still fall down in certain areas. And one of them is that you've got this insistence on doing maths, no matter what the, what the um, subject, um, as you get into further education, you pick a, an area to, to explore. You still have to go back to maths and listen, take it to the field, take it to practical maths. But don't have children who aren't interested in numbers sitting there trying to crack what essentially are codes that they don't want to or care for. But in nature, you can see all. I mean, how many times have we talked? Um, anyway, that di I digress and I don't want to get into maths because I fucking hate maths anyway. But I don't mind having to do it if I have to, which of course you do when you're running a home and you're running businesses and you're running your life. You need to have the basics of numbers and that's fine. But it, it, it still fries my nerves to a degree. But um, anyway... As a parent of a neurodivergent boy, and as a, and I want to say neurodivergent person, but I also want to say autistic as well, it's just who we are. Um, and as a parent, I've, I've, you know, I've put my son in certain settings and, and I have to resolve that. If I was going through all of this now with him trying to find somewhere and it wasn't, wasn't right or he wasn't enjoying it, I would pull him out and completely redo it. But I, I did it. I waited till he was 18 and just sort of said, right, OK, you don't have to be anywhere. So you, you don't have to until you work out what you want to do. And we've done that. Um, but I'm hearing that when children are really suffering and they don't want to go to school, not only do you have it written down as an absence, but um, parents are starting to get charged for absences. Which is fucking shocking. I mean, I heard some stories about what's going on in the system 
I, I hear them all the time and I was brought to tears the other day by um, a certain story which I'm not going to repeat because I don't want to I've got the confidence of the human but it I, I had to stop in my tracks and cry that out the injustice that is happening to children daily across this country and we wonder why children are suffering it's because nobody is teaching them about their natural inclination and what excites them and how can we expand on that and what do you want to do because if we start letting children follow their inclinations and, and heart's desires, we're going to have a fully functioning society on all levels, wherever. And there are no levels. There's only a, a, just an even playing field of joy, work, productivity and imagination. And that applies to maths as well, if you're that way inclined. And everybody can just get into their niche but what's happening is when even when you get into a job you've got to do loads of different areas of the things that you don't even want to do I and mean, how many times people start creative businesses and realize they're having to juggle the business side of it and when and it takes them away from their creativity and we've got to just find our own paths and our own interests I mean god I mean when I was a kid my interests were reading music um and draw i mean i used to draw everything but i i didn't do any of those things professionally which is a kind of missed opportunity but i've got other gifts and then i mean i mean i've got we are of a vast we just vast amounts of um of intelligence and knowing and um and passions and passion should not be hobbies passion should be life you're living your lived experience not the other way around like everything you love everything that's fun everything that gets you going just put that to one side and do this it's going to break people it's broken people it breaks people and actually the quality of learning is poor because it's cram 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 to achieve a grade and you can almost forget all about it later. It, it's just, it, it's all so frightening and a nonsense. And it's one of the oldest establishments as it is wired and as it is structured in the country. And yes, globally, their, their education, education needs reform. Educa I believe in education reform globally. Of course I do. But it's not a fucking competition. Well, the Americans do this and well, this Europe does this. It's like, it's not a competition. We have to really open our minds so we can open our children's minds and help them keep doing that for, for the health of everyone. And the amount of times I've read autobiographies about Genius people that have achieved genius and amazing things have really struggled in school and were written off as thick. It's just, you know, it's, these are facts. These are facts. And it's got to change. And I can't wait to get involved in that conversation in, in a bigger in a bigger way because I have been interviewed about it a couple of years ago about the education system and I'm, I said that it's broken, but I have I didn't really two years on the understanding of what that might look like to 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 create healthier children is in and and it needs to be shared because it's almost like you have to rebuild and restructure build actually the buildings themselves so that outdoors becomes indoors and indoors become outdoors because that's where we are at our best i mean i was looking when i was younger um i remember one of my classrooms it was my english classroom and i was right at the back by the window and from that view you could see the hills and I would often <laughs> look at the mills because, and I'm doing it now and it's inspiring me and it's helping me stay where I am. And movement's important as well. And 
and how people look when they're absorbing information. So I, I speak to myself a lot more than I, I allow myself to speak to myself out loud more than I used to because um, I, I do mutter things under my breath. And actually the other day, because I'm Tourette, I was, I looked at something on my phone and I was walking around the corner of a road and I, I said cunt or something really like me that's just so outbursty. And I'd said it under my breath and this woman walked around, I walked around and I, and I saw this woman standing there and I'm in the countryside now. It's not like walking around the corner of like a cityscape where you just say cunt and it wouldn't get looked at or thought about. And I just went, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And she sort of laughed and said, oh God, don't worry about it. But, but, but also, you know, I need to get up and move sometimes or if I'm giddy I need to move my arms and legs and I've got long arms and legs and as a child I had long arms and legs and and, and I contained myself I learned to contain all of that expression that is me and and I was so unconfident as well I didn't want to let any of that any side of myself out like that. And I was and am an autistic human being. <laughs> Which really is just such a wonderful gift, really. To, the knowledge of it is the wonderful gift. The knowledge of it. Because to be diagnosed at that time for me was a, was a, a liberation in itself. But I don't. I believe now because so many people are being diagnosed and then waiting for years to 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 what I don't know. I don't know. What, I I get to the point now after two years of being diagnosed where, if you if you see yourself as a neurodivergent person based on all the things you've heard and all the things um, that have been said, then you just are, and you can actually just start living your life in that vein. I, I just be yourself, be authentic, and everybody else is going to have to change and get in in some kind of like compassionate space where it's like, all oh, right, okay, we are so individual, aren't we? And people do sometimes run down the street. I I watch people look at my son if he gets too far ahead of me and he's in his mind and he's talking about something or he's you know he's being verbal about because he is verbal about what he's thinking thinking out loud, it's deemed like crazy. And it's not crazy. It's actually a way of accessing and processing what we're learning for some. And I don't believe that people should be silenced in order to look a certain way, in order to be perceived as normal. Uh, the more I unmask, and again, I always have a problem with the word masking, but it's fine, I'll just use it for now. Well, I don't, it's not even like, it's just letting your guard down. Letting your guard down to be yourself. And anybody who doesn't like it doesn't have to be around it, really, do they? And boundaries are in place. So, I mean, I've got to the point now where I'm kind of militant about positivity. It's like, don't, if you don't bring positivity to me, you can go away. And I'll, I release you. <laughs> But don't bring it to me. Don't bring it to me. I want to I want to help people and I want to hear the problems that are happening in society and happening in homes and happening between humans. I want to hear all of that because for me, that's just, that's life. We need to help it. We need to find solutions and we need to heal people. I do. But don't bring negative terminology to you, mate, because it demoralises spirits that are listening. Even today, there was a conversation about weather I and mean, i'm going to do a video about weather because it's got to be spoken of but people are so casual about chucking around how miserable winter is and it's not i mean god i used to say how much i preferred summer i'm in leo i need the sun and I'm, that, that is true but we need the sun we need the moon and we need the seasons we need to feel cold we need to feel wet we need to be out there when I, when it rains i'm out there I'm out there in the right gear, just feeling it, listening to it and smelling that fresh air. I like the rain. It is good for us. When I'm on holiday, and historically when I've been on holiday and it starts to rain in a tropical place, I just get in the sea. I don't run, run for cover. I actually get into the sea and feel it because the sea becomes really warm and it's just 
I mean, it's womb-like, really, when you think about it. And we are just constantly coming up with, and out with, with really negative stuff, and it impacts people. It makes people feel like they've, they've got to say that or they've got to believe that or, oh, yeah, I'm like that. But actually, are you like that? I used to, like I say, I used to always say I'm a summer person. I'm not. I'm a day person. I'm a day and night person. I'm a daily person. Every day is an adventure. Every day is a fucking gift. And I'm living my calling, if you like. And it's all about a calling when you're little. We're called to do something. I didn't know what I wanted to do when I was a child. I really didn't know what to do. And, and nobody was really helping me make that decision for either. All I knew is I wanted to stall being an adult because I wasn't fucking ready for it at 15. Yet I'd left school at 15. And it's too young, you know. And and I and I say in my book, I said to my parents, so instead of you know working, because I did try and work, it, could I go and just go back to another education setting just 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 to grow up even? And they agreed, which is obviously a financial thing for my parents as it is for all parents. Supporting people is expensive, isn't it? <laughs> and they said, yes, and I did. And, and my life took whatever it took in the past that I've been down, but I'm actually a writer. Um, I have great imagination. I wanna direct, I wanna take photographs. I am a artist and I'm, want to start exploring that artistic sensibility that I was born with that didn't get nourished and I'm not blaming anyone I'm just saying right now we're not daft we've so especially people of my age who can remember life before being totally absorbed with iPhones and we can actually demonstrate what it's like to be present because even if you weren't getting a good ed education you were present you might have daydreamed out of the hillside but there was no there was only imagination so imagination and um and being able to explore that and being able to be so imaginative <laughs> i was gonna say weird because it's just something we used to play this game when we were kids where we would make uh, little uh, injections at shringes out of twigs and we would like pop elderberries and the, the seeds would come out. And it was like we were in a hospital and we were delivering babies. And my sister laughs at it and goes, God, weren't we weird? And I, but I just think, fuck man, how creative is that? Keep us entertained for hours. And TV, obviously, TV was, there was some great television as well that would you could go off and play and we'd play Charlie's Angels or The Bionic Woman, I mean, or, you know, I used to... I used to sit on on one of the walls at the gar in our garden, in our back garden, and pretend I was on a horse and I would be on that horse. And imagination is so... Um, I was going to say underrated, but it's 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 just not even valued. And that's the saddest thing in the world, isn't it? So I'm not going to say anymore. I'll do a midweek video on Instagram to promote this video, as I always say. But it is, it's the start of a conversation. It's not the end of the conversation. I've got a million more things to say about every single thing I've said today. It isn't a done deal. It isn't a one note. Yes, that's it. Tick, yes, tick, no. Like or dislike. I don't really care for either of those things. What does it trigger in you? What do you think? What do you experience? Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Don't you know what I'm talking about? I don't mind. Just don't judge me and don't be rude to me because I don't deserve it. And I have a few people just going, oh, I don't respect you anymore because you've been so black and white about something. I don't want your respect. I don't know who you are. I'm just talking. And if you disagree, tell me why, but don't diss me. So I'm just, just flagging that up before anybody feels like they want to. And I have to say that because I have to protect myself and to educate at the same time. It's a boundary. 
You know, I've got somebody on YouTube at the moment who's got a half an hour video or 20 minute video, I don't know how long he rants for, about me specifically and how I'm a fake autistic person, how I've suddenly done it to monetize it, which I don't and won't, I get asked to all the time and it's like a big fat fuck off because the word is being monetized, autism is being monetized. And I, even my book has the word autism on the cover. I didn't think it needed it. And to be honest, it probably won't have on the paperback because it's not necessary. You'll find out about that in the book. Anyway, um, anyway, this guy is just completely slated me and it hurt me, it really wounded me. I've reported him because it's defamation of character for a kickoff. I don't even know if it's still there, but it's atrocious. And people are actually commenting and loving that he's hurting me. And I'm so sensitive because I'm autistic as well, because I'm neurodivergent, even telling you makes me want to cry. Because it's mean and ill-spirited Ill and kind of frightening really so be nice be bright be shiny be loving and tell me about yourselves and your children and what's going on with them and what you how you see the education system change because if we don't collectively get together and actually enforce it because right now i would not be paying one fine if tino wasn't wanting to go in school i would go to prison if i had to <laughs> But it shouldn't have to come to that, not paying fines. Oh, paying fines, what? Because we want to protect our children because they're telling us they don't want to go somewhere that they don't like, yet we're being forced to take them in there. I mean, this is modern day Britain, really. Fucking hell, man. So yeah, have a wonderful day, week, year, life, and I'll see you very soon. Take it easy. Bye.